Um, so this evening, uh, those of you that don't know me, I'm Heather Barrett Mould. Um, I'm vice chair of PLT, and I also chair the the science work. Um, and this evening, what we're trying to do is to um, deliver an annual report, effectively. So we're we're going to be trying to tell you what we have been doing over the past year and what we're putting forward into a business plan going forward for next year. So just to remind you, or for those of you that are new to PLT, um, what we always um, plan to do, and that is to try and address the, um, the changes in the number of pollinators that there are, that there are they're in such decline. And so that was how PLT came together originally. And so the activities were to redress the decline in pollinators, to raise awareness, and to inform and encourage. And so we've been trying to do that. We started in February 20? February 20. Um, was when the first meeting was held at the uh, Wax Chandlers and we've moved on since then. So things we've been doing then. Um, the science working group. We started working in the spring of 2020 and what we started doing was undertaking reviews of green spaces in the city and we were reviewing them for pollinator friendly planting. And as we went round we were making an assessment we were trying to give guidance to people who managed those spaces so that they could improve the pollinator-friendly planting. And this summer, we just finished our third season of doing that. We went to around 25 sites. Um, and alongside those reviews, we've always been trying to give um, advice about you know, what you might actually do to... Um, to improve the, the space for pollinators. And it's interesting because as we've progressed, um, as we progressed from that, and we started looking at the pollinators, which we'll come to um, in a little while, but as we progress from that, it is clear that where we know that the green spaces are pollinator-friendly in terms of planting, um, it does act as a, a proxy for the pollinators that we're finding there. Um, and so it, it is making sense, which is quite rewarding, really, because if it wasn't, um, we'd be wondering what we've been doing for three, for three years. But anyway, it does seem to be working. We've also, um, we've also undertaken a, a citizen science project through the Centre for Ecology and Hydrology. Um, some of you will know this as the FIT app. It stands for Flower Insect Timed Count. Um, it's a very easy app to use, and whatever data people gather just goes into a central database. It only takes 10 minutes to, to make one recording. It all goes into a central database, which... Um, which informs the, the national picture. <coughs> We've been fortunate over this year to be successful in our bid to get a grant from the City of London Corporation Community Infrastructure Levy Neighbourhood Fund, um, which is good that I wrote that down because otherwise I would be getting it wrong, um, uh, for 230000 over two years. And we always knew that what we wanted to do was to, is to employ um, a specialist who would be able to tell the difference between all those bees that there were outside there. Um, and what we were really pleased about was that we, we built a partnership with Reading University. And Reading University has um, a large department of exactly the sort of people that we needed. And in addition to knowing their pollinators, they're also really good at mapping and GIS. Um, and so they are experts in the field. And so we've been working with Reading University 
And that's enabled us to then undertake a survey of pollinators. So as well as having three years of looking at the pollinator-friendly planting, this summer, for the first, for the first time, um, we've been able to undertake a survey of what pollinators are there. Because it's all very well us hoping that we're making changes and making a difference. But if we don't have a baseline, we can't really evidence where we are getting to with it. Um, so we, we have that now, and shortly um, you'll meet Constantinus here on the right-hand side, actually just outside here in Barbers, that picture. Yeah, um, that wasn't deliberate, but I just noticed it. Um, yes, so we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, through that same partnership, we've been involved in all sorts of other things as well, um, so we got linked into the DEFRA Pollinator Action Strategy Group, which is really useful because it, um, it enables you to stay up to date with people from around the country who are researching exactly what we're trying to do. Um, we took part in Bees Needs Week with Reading University, and for this year, they put up this stand just outside the Tower of London so that um, we could talk to people who were coming in to look at super bloom. We could talk to them about the decline in pollinators. We could talk to them about how valuable pollinators were. Um, and Reading University have a, a game there, which you can see on their left-hand side, which is about how important pollinators are for different types of food. Um, and uh, a bumblearium there so that you can actually see um, the bees flying around. We've done a little bit of um, education and training, certainly of people who are closely associated with Pollinating London together. So we've had... Um, a few sessions at Kew Gardens with this person on the, the left who is a, a PhD um, postdoc researching in, in different, um, different pollinators, um, Hulk K. Cock. Uh, unfortunately, he has gone to Australia now, um, but he spent a couple of years with us trying to... Um, showing us the difference between some of the different bees and also working with us on the citizen science project. Um, we had a session at Capel Manor College where we were looking at all sorts of different types of pollinators, but also learning how to catch them. And then once you've caught them, how to identify them. Um, and actually catching them is not so easy. It is a technique. So... Um, for quite a while we were going around with our nets catching these pollinators only to look in the net and the thing has gone um so we did get better at that over a period of time um but that was also really useful and and actually really enjoyable so um we think we might have some sessions next summer probably where we'll go out and invite any of you to come along with us and have a go at trying to catch some of these pollinators and have a look at them and identify them. Um, we got involved in um, the Superbloom community workshops. So when the, Tower of, when the Superbloom was um, developed at the Tower of London, in association with Superbloom, there was a lot of work going on in schools, um, especially those in disadvantaged areas, but also there were a whole load of community workshops, and they were mostly in East London. So we got involved in trying to um, talk about the decline in pollinators and actually take those out outside and give them a chance to, to try and you know, catch something. And the delight when um, that, especially that kid in the middle there, um, managed to catch something and put it in a, a cage so that they could begin to identify it was just lovely to see. Um, and I think we'd quite like to do more of that work. So, going on to 2023, um, definitely more of the same. 
We're not going to stop doing any of the things that we have been doing. Um, along the way, we've been working with City of London City Gardens um, and also the Environmental Resilience Area. And um, the work that they're doing is, is now really taking off. And they're very keen to make sure that as they're putting new planting in, that that will be good pollinator friendly planting and that we'll be able to evidence that the pollinators are there. So that partnership with City of London Corporation, I think is going to strengthen over 2023. Up until now, we've had pollinator friendly planting audits or reviews, but we've also had separately this summer, the pollinator surveys. So. That doesn't really make sense. It, it was a bit of a timing issue this year that you know we'd already got the one underway and then we didn't get the money until later than we thought and then we, then we got the um, pollinator ecologist. So it was a timing issue this year. But for next year, we'd want to bring those two things together um, so that the whole thing is done together. We want to map the city um, map the city with the green spaces on it. If you go to City of London Corporation, they tend to have the, uh, a map which shows the, the green spaces that they manage. Um, and we want to overlay on that the green spaces that are privately owned and privately managed. Um, and then once we've mapped that green space and we've identified where the better green space is, then we will also map on top of that uh, the pollinator presence so that we, we get a fairly good idea of where the best corridors are for the pollinators to move through. Um, this, this picture here came out of the All-Island Pollinator Strategy um, which I do love, and yes, you should look it up sometime. It's got lots of nice resources with it, um, but one of the things about the All Island Pollinator Strategy uh, was they got this diagram in which illustrated how important the corridors were for the pollinators, and in fact, it's, it's more of a network than corridors. But we need to make sure that we know where the pollinators are, that we know where the good green space is, and enhance those areas so that we can make it very easy for the pollinators to move along. Um, we're expecting to develop a corporate social responsibility package to take into businesses. We'll continue to work with Reading University with their research projects. Um, one might be the, the sighting of a a pollen grain sensor and the idea is possibly to put that down in temple gardens. Um, we want to um, extend our work into health and well-being. I think you know we, we all know about the value of green space to health and well-being. Um, what we would like to do is to get involvement of more businesses in actually helping us in a citizen science project to gather that evidence and at the same time link that to corporate social responsibility. Um, we haven't had an education group so far, even though we've sort of dabbled in education. So we want to set up a, an education as a subgroup of the science working group and then we'll be able to extend the work that we do there. Um, of course, pollinators don't know about political boundaries. And so um, we're expecting to move out into the adjacent boroughs and begin to do some work out there. We've actually just this week been talking to people from Bug Life. Um, they've got a very interesting eastern area set of corridors so we're linking with them so that we can work with them and work with other partners um, to make sure that these corridors these networks work um, we're developing future further partnerships with all sorts of um, other like-minded groups we want to get more closely involved with the friends of city city gardens um, the 
London Wildlife Trust, so on and so on. There are so many people that we need to be working with. So um, this is uh, just a picture, really, which shows something about the collecting of the pollinators which took place over the summer. So Constantina Solis and Louise Hutchinson, unfortunately Louise can't be here this evening, which is a bit of a shame, um, but Constantinus has done so much work on this. Um, it might be worth, actually, Constantinus, can you point out where the corridors are, where we think the corridors are? Okay, maybe you can just hear me. <laughs> um, so, uh, we've been talking with corporate, uh, the City of London Corporation, and with the work that we've been doing as well. And whilst we haven't actually got this mapped yet, the places we think the strongest corridors are likely to be, <coughs> there's one that runs across here, um, there's one that runs down here, exactly right through the middle of where we are now, um, and, um, and we both think there's probably one that runs along the, along the Thames here as well. Um, so they're the things that, uh, they're the corridors that we have in mind at the moment um, and we've got to do more work on that and, um, and then if that's confirmed then we just need to strengthen the, plant, the planting um, and the situation for those, those bees um, and Constantinus is going to take over from me now but he, what, one of the things he will be saying is how important the um, the nesting sites are. Um, so it's not just always about the actual planting. And uh, I have to I have to tell you about this. So this is the report that got put together by Constantinus, mostly by Constantinus, also a little bit by Louise, um, which is a report on what they found this summer in terms of pollinators through the city. Um, and there's a report there for everybody as you go out. Um, but, uh, yeah, do please pick that up. So, Constantinus, over to you. Thank you. 